Hmm? What do you mean don't shout? Who's shouting? I am not shouting. But I cannot tolerate the way you people behave, right? All of you have no consideration for me. I am such an important person. You know, 10 o'clock, I've got a board meeting. I've got to be there on time. And here you people raise up such petty things. And then you say, don't shout. What do you mean, don't shout? Who's shouting? Understand the way that you provoke me. And you don't have any consideration for me. What do you think I should behave as? What is this, yeah? All the time telling me, don't cry, don't cry. Obviously, I cry, right? Look at the way you behave. Look at this. Even I have to go for work. I'm getting delayed. Oh my God, this unreasonable behavior. It's too much. I'm not able to deal with it. I don't know what to do about it. Ah, okay. Taken you a little by surprise, but this is reality. There was this very famous book by John Gray, which says, uh, why men shout and women cry. It's one of a lot of books written by him, which are very, very uh, useful at a practical level. And I have read it more than once. I have uh, quoted from it. I have used it for helping, you know, uh, uh, counselees and all that I've done. So at one point when I was talking to somebody like this, it just struck me that uh, I should also, you know, try and uh, see if I can convey that message in a more of an interactive uh, manner, knowing how many of us nowadays read books. So I thought, let me put it uh, in a more interactive and a more visual uh, form. So that's why I took up this uh, topic. Now, if you observed this two quick clips that you saw, first it was me, the man, then it was Seema, the woman. What do you think happened? What do you think are the emotions? Dissatisfaction, irritation, being let down, feeling unwanted. The emotions were exactly the same to the man and to the woman. But did you see the outburst? Did you see the Typical reaction, a male reaction and a female uh, reaction. So what happens is that the women say, why do these men shout all the time? Can't they control their emotions? Why do they have to be so loud and brash and angry all the time? And surprisingly, I have so many men who come and say, I can't even carry out a decent argument with my wife. Anything I say and she breaks down and starts crying. That is her weapon. Now she starts crying. What am I supposed to do? I have to leave the place and go away. I have to stop the argument. Wonderful, isn't it? See how she uses crying as a tool to get the way that she wants. I can't even raise my voice. I can't say anything because she's got this wonderful tool, no? Breaking down, crying, whining. Now, this is what I want to discuss today. Right. Firstly, let us understand that a lot of women feel men do not have emotions. I want to clear that myth. Men have as much emotions as women. This has been proven by research and surveys and whatever it is. You don't have to take my word for it. A fact like the soldier who sacrifices his life for the sake of his country. It is a purely emotional act. I will go to the extreme of giving up my life for my country. A man who slogs away to glory, works in a horrible job for years and years because he feels only then he will be able to give a good education to his children. He is governed by his emotions. A person who wants to achieve, by achieving uh, career-wise, even a person who wants to win over the love of his girlfriend, 
it is purely an emotional act which makes him go out of the way promise her the moon do anything for her these are all emotions right so let us understand that men have as much emotions as women do the only thing is the expression of those emotions comes out in a different way i would not even say wrong way i would say a different uh, uh, way so there are innumerable instances for example where a man is so busy with his work 24 by 7 he is at work in office or even when he comes home he is on the laptop or he is on the mobile and the family particularly the wife feels this person is so indifferent this person doesn't love his family members this person only thinks of his work now you ask the man and like i mentioned a minute back he says i do it because i love my family if i did not have a wife and children i could stay in a one room or rough it out somewhere and whatever i earn i would have been very happy but you know i've got this responsibility I have to provide, I have to get a good house, I have to provide basic amenities, I have to give a good education to my children, I have to give them so many things, no? I love them so much that the only way to be able to fulfill what I want to do with them is to work harder and harder and harder. It's a highly competitive world out there, dude, you don't know. Unless you are on your toes and perpetually struggling, you will be left out. So that is what I do. So what I was saying is that the expression of love is in a different manner. And that is what they don't understand. Similarly, men who claim that my wife is perpetually nagging me. She's always correcting me. She's always making demands uh, uh, on me. She breaks down and she cries. She sulks. She points out so many fingers at uh, me and she says, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Doesn't she understand what I am going through? But now if you look at it from the feminine perspective, why is she doing it? Because she loves him. If she did not care, she would have said, okay, he's the provider. He goes to office, he works, he earns money and he gets the money and I enjoy myself. I will spend my time with my parents, my friends, my children. She could have given up, isn't it? Why is it that she doesn't give up? Because that is her way of expressing love. You are my life partner. I love you. I want to have a good, harmonious life with you. And that is why I am constantly behind you, telling you. Even a simple thing like, you know, a wife telling the husband, don't smoke or don't eat rich food. Or, you know, doctor was saying that your sugar levels are high, so don't eat sugar. To the man, it may appear as though she's perpetually nagging me and she's behind my back and she hates me so much that she doesn't let me live in peace. I come back home and all the time, this is what she is behind me. But to the woman, it is her way of expressing her uh, uh, love. The other factor, which I've spoken of earlier, but I want to reiterate the same point is, generally men are left-brained and women are right-brained. Mostly, not all. Now, a left-brained person is a person who is logical, sequential, analytical, mathematical, critical. These are the traits of a left-brained person. A right-brained person is emotional, intuitive, interpersonal, creative, literary. Now, when a person is right-brained, the habits, the behavior, the interests, the talents are different from a person who is left brain. Nature has made probably with some wisdom 
that men should be left brain and women should be right brain because only then they complement each other now it is up to us whether to use this complement you know when you have a north pole and you have a south pole they attract each other imagine if both were north poles imagine if a man gets married to a man or a woman gets married to a woman of course now it is accepted and permissible and all that but there's a very, very interesting thing i know a lot of same sex couples right inevitably one of them plays the male role and one of them plays the female role starting from the way their demeanor their dressing their expressions their way of talking the profession that they choose are typically male and female so even though physically they belong to the same gender they again attract each other and they live with each other and they love each other because they complement each other this is what i want you to understand there is a beauty in that you know difference the french always say that you know men and women are different long live the difference life would have been very boring if men started behaving the way women do and if women started behaving the way men do and that is what john gray points out to us and says that women expect their men to behave to react to respond the way they would have done in that situation and the man expects his woman to react respond behave in the way he would have done it and when that does not happen men shout and women cry and there is no winner or loser in this game does because a man generally ends up shouting it does not mean that he wins the argument or he gets the upper hand sometimes the person who's crying gets the upper hand anyway this is not a ding dong battle this is not a court of law where we are trying to prove one is right the other is uh, wrong or something but this is what we have to accept in order to have more harmony between the uh, you know what they call it the genders right okay now why are men left brain and why are women right brain this is another very interesting aspect it is partly because of genetics maybe i don't know i'm not a geneticist but it is a lot to do with the learned phenomenon men have been cavemen from prehistoric days the hunter the gatherer and the protector women right from the beginning of history have been the nurturer the caregiver the lover it is so ingrained through generations and generations of our ancestors that we cannot give it up even in a world today in the 21st century in metropolitan um, uh, cities women are playing as great a role as men professionally you will have women ceos you will have women engineers you will have women surgeons you will have women playing all sorts of roles which traditionally were you know restricted to men just a couple of generations back but has that changed the demeanor has that changed the approach or attitude or the emoting and the relationship no a woman who is a highly qualified person holding a very very strong career position and whatever it is when it comes down to family when it comes down to personal level she still behaves the same way as her grandmother or great grandmother did and the same thing with the man let's say here is this man you know who has a partner who is not only doing as well as him maybe doing better maybe she is the main breadwinner she is the one in the limelight he acknowledges that but 
because he is relegated to playing this role. There are men, for example, who are nowadays I come across who are doing a lot of the cooking or taking care of children, which traditionally men never did. So you have this man who says, okay, you are busy. I'll take care of the baby. Or you are tied down with something else. I'll cook the food. So they are taking on feminine roles, right? But their demeanor, their expression, their behavior is not changing. When it comes to you know, behavior which involves emotions, they still behave the way. Now this is not going to change in the near future. If it has not changed in thousands of years, please don't have um, hope that it will change overnight or within this generation or even with the next generation. Huh. What we can do is, as far as the next generation is concerned, teach them a little more. Teach them to understand. I have a small little incident ingrained in my mind that I must have been five or six years old. I was running and playing. I fell down and I saw small red spots on my knee, you know, some uh, thing had grazed my knee and little, little blood was coming out. The moment I saw that, I thought I'm dying. And I let out a big shriek and I started bawling, crying. My father came running out and said, what happened? What happened? I pointed my knees. He went down and looked at my knees. He took his hand and brushed it aside. So those red spots disappeared. And he said, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying away to glory? Nothing has happened to you. I said, no, I'm dying. He said, no, no you're not dying at all. Nothing is happening to you. Go wash your knees and this and that. And then uh, go and play whatever, do whatever you want. And he said, don't cry like a girl, he said. At that age, daddy is the ultimate. He is the end all and be all. Whatever he says is the absolute truth, right? So this great daddy told this little five-year-old fellow, that is me, don't cry like a girl. But daddy never told me how to cry like a boy. So what did I do after that? Anytime I had something disturbing me, I would make sure that I don't cry. And because of that, what happened? Emotions started getting suppressed, suffocated, stifled. Till I came to adolescence. And when I realized that I'm a big boy, I have power, I have control, I have strength. I used to bring out my irritation my disappointments by shouting. And daddy never said, don't shout like a boy. In fact, I vaguely even remember if mommy would complain saying, look at your son, how he is behaving. Why is he so uncouth? Why does he shout? Daddy would probably laugh and say, oh, he is a boy. Forget it. He'll get over it. So directly or indirectly, you know, that thing was propagated that it is okay for you to shout, but it is not okay for you to cry. Now, all the girls sitting out there who are listening to this program, go back into your childhood. When you were a small child and if somebody did something to you and if you picked up your fist and started boxing that person. What would your parents say? You're a girl. Don't behave like this. What's wrong with you? Even if you shouted, they would have said the same thing to you. That is how that indoctrination came in. But when you cried, what happened? Oh, my poor baby. Come here. Sit in my lap. Don't worry. Mama is here. No, we'll take care of you. So time and again, time and again, it was reinforced to the boys that you shout 
and it was reinforced to the girls that you cry. Now, when you are 20 or 40 or 60, can you change so easily your entire basic uh, uh, demeanor? No, you can't. In fact, as I was mentioning to you about a girl, you know, protecting herself or hitting or whatever uh, um, it is, boys and men are made to believe that they are physically stronger than women. In many cases, it is true. A woman is built in a slightly smaller frame and a little more delicate demeanor and all that, but it is not always the case. I think yesterday or day before, what's that girl's name? Nikat from a small town in uh, Nizambad is now on the way to becoming the world boxing champion. So do you still think that girls are weaker than uh, uh, boys? If any roadside Romeo wants to tease her and she gives one box and that fellow will go flying 10 feet into the air. Okay. Now you may say, no, she is one exceptional girl. But if you read her interviews, there's something very significant. She said that my parents, though my father was also a sportsman, and though he encouraged his daughter for sports, but he said not boxing. Both father and mother said, if you do boxing and somebody hits your face, and if there is a mark on your face or your face gets disfigured, then nobody will marry you. Imagine telling that to a little girl who's aspiring to become a great sportswoman. Have you ever heard a parent or a coach telling a boy, don't get into boxing because if somebody hits you and uh, your face gets dis uh, disfigured, then no girl will marry you. See the irony of the situation. I'm very proud of the fact that here is an Indian girl who, you know, went against what was indoctrinated into her and has achieved something. Now, she's a good role model. Before her, Mary Com was also a great uh, role model. So many of them. But like I said, they are exceptions because the others succumb. And once you succumb and once you are made to believe that you are not physically strong and you cannot protect yourself and you should not protect uh, uh, yourself, the only way that it comes out in is in the form of frustration, crying, whatever uh, uh, it is. It goes right up to the uh, you know extent where the girl grows up, becomes a mother. And now she is supposed to be all the time that great sacrificial mother. Whatever else she may do, she has to give first priority to children. One excellent example is this great lady called Indra Nui. She was the CEO and even the chairman of PepsiCo. PepsiCo is one of the maybe uh, top 50 organizations in the whole world. Indra Nui, a girl born and brought up in India and in Chennai, migrated to uh, USA. Her parents didn't go. She went uh, over there and went up the corporate ladder. And eventually, as I said, she became the CEO of uh, uh, PepsiCo. At the same time, she married and she had two daughters. While she was going up the ladder in the corporate uh, world, she was also bringing up two little girls who eventually became two teenagers. How did she balance? How she balanced is one thing, but the pressures that she was under, not only from others, but even from her own self, Am I justifying my role as a mother? She has a very understanding and a very supportive husband. Despite that, she was always made to feel doubt and question that whatever I am doing, am I justifying my role as a mother or not? In fact, her mother 
gave her a very interesting piece of advice. She said, you go to office, do your work, come back home. And when you park your car in the garage, leave your crown in the garage. What is that crown? The crown is CEO, chairman, whatever she was. She said, leave that crown in the garage and then come inside as a wife and mother. Have you ever, ever come across an upwardly mobile or a successful man being given that advice by his elders? Leave your crown in the garage and come back to being a husband and a father. This is where we need to work on. We need to work with children. There's a lot that can be done. The children who have not yet come to that stage where the gender differences become very obvious. The four-year-olds, the six-year-olds, the ten-year-olds, both boys and girls, can we help them to understand that while you belong to one gender, and you should be proud of your gender. You should be proud that you are a boy or you are a girl. Nothing wrong with that. At the same time, you need to understand the other genders. And that includes more so particularly the boys. I remember, I think it was the first Independence Day message that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave from Red Fort. And he raised a very interesting point. He said, we are so protective, so possessive about our daughters. We keep asking our daughters, Tum kaha gai thi? Kiske saath gai thi? where were you? Why did you come late? But he said, we never ask our sons. Tum kaha gai thi? Kiske saath gai thi? Kyun gai thi? Kyun late aya? When we are encouraging the boys to start feeling that way, what do you expect will happen when they grow up? We have been doing this one generation after another. At least now, can we put a break to it? We who cannot change grown-up men, you cannot change grown-up women. Men will continue to shout. Women will continue to cry and say, Kya karu? Ma na. Typical Bollywood dialogue. So there's not much we can do about it. But there's a lot that we can do with regard to the next generation. This men crying and women, uh, men shouting and women crying, as I said, is not genetic. It is an inbuilt thing which comes out of indoctrination. It is based on the upbringing. It is based on the lessons and examples that are taught. It is based on the role modeling that we do with our children. Children growing up, particularly boys, watch their father shouting and their mother crying. And nobody seems to be bothered. Nobody points out and says this is wrong. Why can't mommy shout and uh, daddy cry? So what happens? He grows up thinking this is what li life is all about. This is one strong message which I would like each one of you to please spread this little message after today to whichever adults who are concerned about the next generation. Please start you know, changing that outlook, the demeanor, the attitude of both boys and girls. Don't tell a girl that you cannot do boxing because somebody will hit you and your face will get disfigured and then nobody will marry you. You're pulling on the self-esteem of the child. Don't tell a boy that, yeah, boys will be boys. It's okay. He will get all right. Let him shout. Let him get into brawls or whatever. That's not fair. So please take this message with you. And I need that one minute break as always. Sima has got something very interesting to share with you today. I'll be back in a minute.
Hi, today you can see all of us wearing, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, Banja right forever t-shirts when you walk into Banjara, all of us, including Ali, to each one of us here in the staff. And why we are doing this is because today we are all going to Manthan. So it's picnic time, it's team bonding time, team building time for us. And uh, yeah, we are going to, we are going there only with open mind. We don't know what Ali has planned for us there. But yeah, the whole idea is to be together eat together and we'll stay the night over there and uh, yeah we will uh, do certain activities and uh, stuff to know each other better we work here together but yeah those uh, nice moments the personal uh, journeys so it'll be nice uh, sharing uh, with each other and uh, yes really looking forward and really really excited so we'll be shutting down Banjara at three o'clock today we'll be closing office and we'll all be going there. And uh, yeah, that's the plan. And we'll stay the night. Tomorrow, uh, our friend Asra, she's uh, opening the a kennel called Off Leash in Manthan. So tomorrow is the inaugural. She's invited everybody, all the doggy dog parents and uh, dog lovers to come and spend the day there. So uh, that's another thing uh, we're looking forward to. So that's what's happening here. And of course, as usual, uh, the place is bustling. Panjara is bustling with uh, our new babies coming in DCS 23. We had a very nice program last Saturday and uh, they were here and we interacted. It was nice. And every day we have, uh, you know, uh, many of you coming here uh, for uh, inquiring about the program as well as for admission. So, yes, admissions are going on in full, uh, at uh, full speed. So do come. 25th June is when we officially start. But don't even wait till then if you're planning to take this up or you have somebody in mind who wants to take it up because we've already started the entire process uh, of rapo building and meeting up. So do reach out for DCS 23 and all other programs as usual are there on the website. So all right, that's what's going on in Banjara. Thought we'll keep you posted. Hmm, Manish just showed you a poster of uh, an interesting program that I'm doing. You can't really call it a program because it involves five minutes of your time every day for the next three weeks. But uh, if you're interested in something like that, do get in touch uh, with Anis or any of our people in the office. It's a very simple thing of how to enrich your life through the thought and the experience of death. Don't get scared. I'm not going to ask you to do something like PUBG or something that you jump over the roof or something like that. It's just at the thought process. And as I said, five minutes of your uh, day. These are the little, little unusual things that we keep doing all the time, you know, just to keep ourselves occupied and to do. So we've got this break in between the DCS uh, 22, which ended and DCS 23, which is going to start next month. So I thought, let me use that uh, time. Okay, so now Anis is going to show me which are the comments and questions that have uh, uh, come up. So Vidya says, why is it so tough to make the men express his emotions? It is not at all tough, Vidya. <laughs> men express their emotions immediately. You say something and he gets provoked and he starts shouting. That is expression of emotions. What we need to do is not to you know, make the men express emotions, but to express it in a different manner. There's a lot on that. I don't want to take the time of all the viewers uh, today, but as in a very simple form, I will tell you, do not get into arguments. If he's shouting, you don't start shouting. Be assertive, accept his behavior for the moment, keep quiet. He will calm down. He cannot be angry all the time. He cannot be shouting all the time. When he is back to a good mood, that is the time you bring up this question of next time when you're angry, next time when you're upset, next time when you're irritated, can you tell me in a different manner? You will get results and I will respond much better to you. Start with that. Yeah. Ah, Sheila says, tough to understand what men are thinking. Sheila, take a survey of men. 9 out of 10 will tell you it is tough to understand what women are thinking. I can never understand. And even if they understand other women, they generally don't understand their own wife. 
So it is a ping pong battle. Both of them can keep on complaining. Now my question is, when you say, tough to understand what men are thinking, it is tough. It is not impossible. So what efforts have you made to understand what men are thinking? Have you spoken to men of different uh, ages? I mentioned to you, you go younger and younger. If you are a grown up adult and your partner and your you know, peers are people of your age, go lower down. Maybe talk to a man who's 25, 20, 15, 10. You will get an idea about how, what the male person thinks when he's 10, when he's 15, when he's 20, when he's 25. And from there a pattern evolves. And then work with the men who are important to you. Vidya says, why is it that certain men don't understand that these are wife's way of expressing love? Rather, they just complain that you talk to me only when you need some household products and they doubt that we are in relationship with somebody else. That is a very, very sad situation. Be it a man or be it a woman, if you doubt Without any you know, concrete evidence, yes, there are people who get into relationships and they, that has to be dealt with by the spouse. I'm not talking. Those are very rare and whatever happens, that's a very serious situation which has to be dealt with. But if there is a man, as you gave this example, who perpetually thinks that his wife is in relationship, you know what? It is nothing to do with his wife. It is nothing to do with his relationship with his wife. It is his own feeling of insecurity. It is his low self-esteem. It is his loneliness. It is his feeling of, of being isolated. And he doesn't know how to handle it. So he hits out by making some accusations and you know, saying this is what it is. Okay. The same way as you said that, you know, okay, you said that why is that how much
Yes, we are back again. So sorry for the rukawat. Technology sometimes also behaves like human beings, you know, throws tantrums. At least it doesn't shout or cry, but it makes life miserable for us. I was answering Vidya's question. Why is that however much a man shouts, it is expected that the uh, you know woman should keep quiet. Now, when you say expected, who brought in that expectation? Please go back and reflect. It was your mother, your grandmother, your teachers. So many people told you that you are a girl and you should not shout. If they themselves have indoctrinated this into you in your innocent and vulnerable years, obviously it becomes part of your personality. And that was never done to your husband or your brother or any other male member of the family or in the class, right? Now that is what I want us to understand that we are doing. And that's the reason why I said before we closed for the break, that please work with the smaller men before the men become men when they are still boys, when they still listen to you, when they look up to you, when they have this great regard and respect for women and for mothers and for elder sisters and all that. That is a time to help them to understand. If we start now, Maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we will be creating a generation of equality. Huh. Saraf Sahib says, women's bearing capacity is inherently more than that of men. That's why men are in a hard condition to digest something done by uh, women, whether she be his wife, daughter, friend. Yes, same thing I will tell to all of you, including Mr. Saraf, that when you say bearing capacity, where has this bearing capacity come from? Why is it that a soldier's capacity to bear physical pain, even when he is shot and he's got a bullet in his leg, he still moves forward and he still continues to fight? If you or I were to have a bullet in our leg, we'll just collapse. Now, this bearing capacity of the soldier is not genetic. It is not inborn. He was trained in that manner. He was indoctrinated into that manner. He was motivated into that. Both body and mind was told that you are a soldier. You have to defend the nation. You have to do this and that. And that is what made him a hero when he has to face adversity. The same thing apply. Ah, women shout and cry, Sheila says, while men only shout largely. It is a fact. That's the reason why I brought up this uh, uh, topic. But it is how you shout and how you cry which is uh, important. In fact, since men hardly cry and definitely not you know, in front of their spouse or somebody. I have also come across, unfortunately, one odd in a rare instance here and there, she tolerates, she accepts, she somehow, you know, carries on, she gets fed up and she says more, I am going to take things in my control. And the moment she announces that, this man breaks down, starts crying. And the woman is so overwhelmed that she feels that nothing can be you know, sweeter than this, that my man is crying and asking for forgiveness. And everything gets deleted and she goes back to be what she was. Please be aware of that. <coughs> Roshan says, very lucky to get a life partner who never ever shouted at me and never did I cry. Fantastic. Congratulations to Roshan. And I also feel that while the partner may have had a good upbringing, hats off to his parents and elders, at the same time, it is also how the wife behaves with the man which makes a difference. What is needed in these circumstances is assertiveness. 
neither being aggressive nor being possessive i mean uh, you know giving away easily and uh, becoming submissive assertiveness wins the day against people who unnecessarily lose their temper and who shout surika says how can we help our counselees help them behave in ways that their love and care reaches the partner here one thing is very important surika you, you have to deal with in two different ways when it comes to a male and when it comes to a female by the time this counselee has come to you the person has grown up in a lot of indoctrination of behaviors and attitudes and is also experiencing certain things right so we have to deal with the men differently and the women differently with the men if it can be made to understand that i understand your anger i understand that you are very frustrated and you are pushed to a corner and that is why you shout or that is why you get so angry but do you get results if you do not get results would you like to try out a different way instead of shouting at your partner or creating that that ruckus would you like to try her? with a female you have to tell her that whatever the person is doing to you do not get provoked either way don't break down and cry and show your vulnerability and do not start countering and shouting and arguing be assertive we have to teach women assertiveness and that assertiveness believe me is directly connected to self esteem innumerable indian women suffer from low self esteem because of the way they have been brought up i am not capable i am a girl i own dreams and i have to listen first to my father then to my husband and then to my son we have to break that any girl who has good self esteem and who is assertive can easily handle a father a husband a brother a son who tends to get angry and shout over a period of time the change can be brought in conclusion is you know seeking help or counseling don't wait till you know uh, it comes to that exhaustion stage and where you get so frustrated that you may actually do something which is very impulsive do it while you feel that things are little better this is another thing which i have experienced with so many people let's say you have this man who keeps shouting all the time and the wife is very submissive you know what she thinks no if i am nice to him then he will stop shouting if i don't argue if i don't you know present my view point and if i accept his anger and do as he tells me to do even though i don't want to do that slowly he will realize what a good partner i am and he will start being nice to me sorry it doesn't happen uh, that way you have to take it as early as possible and this includes what surika has asked handle unresolved feelings from the past this is something which is, as you know you will recall that i have been constantly striving on take this man woman situation where the man shouts the woman cries whatever uh, it is somebody had also mentioned the man always doubts his wife whether she is having other relationships all this is based from the past it starts in early childhood and a lot of things from our childhood need to be resolved even if it is not currently an issue of shouting or crying or whatever it is but a lot needs to be resolved our education system does nothing to help us learn life skills to build up our emotional intelligence but it's never too late even now it works and this is something very very heartening when sheila says being politely assertive has been working for me i think 
we should give an applause to Sheila for not only believing in it, but practicing it. She's used a very nice phrase, politely assertive. Yes, I know you're angry. I know you've got meetings and you're uh, very stressed out and you're a very important person. At the same time, I think we need to resolve this. I don't feel that I am going to give in at this uh, stage. I need to do this. In whatever manner, whatever words, whatever expressions, but politely assertive can really go a very long uh, way to help uh, people. So these are some of the very, very important uh, uh, things. As I said, Number one, we need to keep feeling frustrated because the woman cries all the time or the woman is feeling frustrated because the man shouts all the uh, time. It is not impossible, but it is tough to handle it, to deal with it, to try to slowly bring about a change to the extent that it is uh, uh, possible. Don't expect miracles. Don't expect overnight change from the person. But I can assure you that 10%, 20%, 30% more harmonious relationship goes a long way in making you feel contented. And it sets the ball rolling for better and better and better relationship. At the same time, look at the younger generation and see what we can do. Let us not be so selfish that we work only for our needs. We owe it to the next generation that we have to leave a good world behind them. There's so much talk going on about global warming, about you know wars and whatever we have been doing, the way we are destroying the world in so many ways. I am equally concerned about the way we are destroying the younger generation at an emotional level. I have told this a number of times and I repeat again that Emotional intelligence can be built up at any time. And what, what, is, what are the first two pillars of emotional intelligence? Self-awareness. Yes, right now I am getting angry. I am getting irritated. I am feeling very disappointed, cheated, awareness. The second pillar is managing the emotions. Now that I know that I am provoked, I am angry. I am feeling very restless. How do I manage? Which is the best way to manage my emotion? Roshan says, keep giving love and one is bound to get back love. No shouting and crying will happen. You're very lucky if you keep giving love and you do get back love. It doesn't happen all the time. I'm sure all of you have heard that little proverb that, you know, you pick up a street dog and you nurture it, feed it, take care of it. Take care of all his needs. He looks up to you and says, you're taking such good care of me. You must be God. You pick up a little kitten and take care of it, feed it, groom it, protect it, do everything. The kitten looks at you and says, you are taking such good care of me. I must be God. Remember, that some of us are dogs, some of us are cats. So you have to take that chance. Surika says, how can we work towards better emotional autonomy, which prevents us from developing dependency? Yes, Surika. Since we live in family, since we have to interact with people, I would suggest that we don't work towards developing or, you know, working from uh, uh, you know, the uh, dependency work towards what I always call as interdependency. It's the same way as there may be a family where the man goes out to work and you know, earns the salary and the livelihood and the woman takes care of the house and the kitchen and the children. They are not dependent on each other. They are interdependent. They are complementing each other and men and women complement each other in a hundred different ways. So learn to enjoy that aspect of uh, 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 it. That is what is needed. 
it can be done it requires a, some time and effort and it can be done if you decide on the next saturday's topic that is don't grow old i'll be seeing you next saturday there we will be talking about how while the numbers pile up you ensure that you remain young till the last day of your life so have a nice wonderful week i shall see you next saturday bye bye